Hi, I need to ask you, when I using fish to cycle, which I can use, like ammonia? The school of aquaponics. So I'm gonna assume that you're referring to, or your, your question that you're asking is, um, either should you use ammonia or which type of ammonia can you use? It's either one of those. So I'm gonna answer both of them just to be on the safe side of it and to give the rest of the family out there an opportunity to get the answer to both. So yes, you are gonna use ammonia. You're gonna use ammonia because that is part of the nitrogen cycle. That is the first portion of it. That is what's required for the nitrogen cycle. You need some form of ammonia. Actually, it's ammonium is what is gonna, what is used in the nitrogen cycle, but ammonia is just the name for um, it's just usually the term that's used um, to describe it. So you're gonna need ammonium for a fishless cycle. And just in case some of you out there are not sure what a fishless cycle is, it's, it's self-explanatory. It pretty much is what it sounds like. It's cycling your aquaponic system, getting the ammonia uh, converted and oxidized to nitrite and then a nitrate, but it's doing it without the ammonia uh, produced from the fish. And this is typically done by using an ammonia source that is purchased from like your local hardware store, um, usually ammonia that's uh, manufactured for cleaning. Um, and when you're looking for, when you're purchasing one of these uh, ammonia supplies, you wanna make sure that it is 100% a, a ammonia. You wanna make sure that it, it doesn't have any surfactants in it. You wanna make sure that it doesn't have any extra scent. So we don't want ammonia limit, uh, 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 lime scented ammonia or anything, lemon scented ammonia. We only want pure ammonia, that's all we want. So a lot of times when you look on the back of these labels, it won't say that it's just 100% pure ammonia or anything like that. So one little rule of thumb that you can use is you can just shake up the bottle and if it, ha if it doesn't produce any soap or any suds or anything like that, then you know that it doesn't have any surfactants in it and that's most likely the source of ammonia that we wanna use. Now how are we able to use these bottled sources of ammonia and not use fish ammonia is because Ammonia is the same regardless of the source that it comes from. NH4, whether it comes from the fish or whether it comes from gorillas, uh, chimpanzees, and uh, uh, zebras, it's all the same. Humans, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. Ammonia is going to produce the same thing. It's going to produce the same nitrifying bacteria. So it all works out the same. So hopefully that helps you out. And now you can become one step closer to becoming an aquaponics god. Now let's move on to the next question. After cycling, when and how should I add more fish and plants? Do I add the fish and plants a little at a time or can I add 10 to 20 pounds of more fish now? So for the sake of time, I didn't go through and read the entire uh, question on this video because if I did, we'd be here for 357,000 years. So I just went through and read the uh, main por parts of the question and you can go back and read the rest if you wanna find out all the details and I'll just explain the answer and I'll add in the details of the system as we go along. So to answer this question, we're gonna to have to deal with each part, the fish portion and the plant portion separately and see if we can come up with some type of conclusion to figure out what you should do or what you can do in your circumstance. So let's start with the plants, I mean not the plants, let's start with the fish. So you have a 180 gallon fish tank and at right now it, you have cycled it and you only have three pounds of fish inside of the system. So this is a super low stocking density that you have thus far. Now you didn't mention anything about the feed. The stocking density is not telling me anything because I need to know how much feed you're feeding. So I'm gonna have to make some assumptions uh, in, in order to give you some advice on what you should do. So I'm gonna assume that you're feeding these, uh, these are pretty mature fish. I'm gonna assume you're feeding them about 1.5% uh, body weight. You could be feeding more, you could be feeding less, but you didn't say that, so I'm gonna have to make my own assumption. So 1.5% body weight, which is going to be for three pounds of fish is gonna be 10 grams, or 20 grams, I'm sorry, 20 grams of feed that you're putting in the system. So 20 grams of feed in the system, you uh, have your system cycled, and you have a relatively low stocking density. So let's say you added 20 more pounds of fish in here. I don't know if these 20 pounds of fish are 20 pounds of fingerlings or 20 pounds of uh, mature fish. Um, so, cause it's two different answers. So I'm going to assume that they're 20 pounds of mature fish. That's what I'm going to assume. So you add 20 pounds of mature fish. Let's say they're each 1.5 pounds each. You add them in the system. So now you have a stocking density of about, uh, one pound per every eight gallons of water, which is a fine stocking point for beginners. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So here's what you can do if you're just dying to put all the fish in there, because in the message you did say you have some, you, you're impatient. So you may want to add all the fish in there. So like I said, it doesn't matter. You can add all as many fish as you want to. That doesn't matter because if you keep the feeding rate still at 20 grams, 
it's still going to be the same amount of ammonia that is produced. So nothing changed. So I'm not really worried about you adding the fish in there. What you have to be worried about is if you're adding the fish in there, you have to incrementally increase the feed. You can't just add all the fish in there and then just feed all of them uh, at the correct ratios. You're going to have to have a lower amount of feeding rate um, and gradually increase, gradually increase because the biological filter, the nitrifying bacteria have to be able to uh, develop uh, along with the growth of the fish, along with the feeding rate of the um, that's being put inside the system. They have to be able to develop and it takes them a few days in order to double in size in order to, um, to for the communities to enlarge. So you, it's, it's a waiting game. So what you have to do is increase from your 10 gram or your 20 grams and you have to go slowly every, every few days, increase, go up, maybe go to 30 grams, then go to 40, 50, over a two week period of time, try that out. Test your ammonia on a daily basis. Test your ammonia on a daily basis to make sure. Now, if you start seeing the ammonia start to spike up going past two milligrams per liter, five milligrams per liter, then you know that you're feeding too much. Now you got to cut it down. So you, there's ways to cycle the system. So you could add all your fish in there. You, you're able to do this, but this is more of an experienced, uh, uh, an aquaponic God who is going to be able to do this. Like I've done this plenty of times where I've cycled the system, put all the fish in there and start going rocking and rolling right away. But that's because I knew what I was doing. I can, I'm testing, monitoring my ammonia levels, nitrite levels, and feeding accordingly. So that's, that's the difference. So you are able to do it, but you just have to be paying attention. You can't be a biscuit headed grower and just slap and feed all in there. You're going to have to weigh your feed out and find out how much you're feeding and then base everything off of that, off of your ammonia readings. Don't worry about the fish starving. They're not like, you know, a lot of uh, Americans who need a meal every three to five minutes. Fish can go times, uh, uh, long periods of times without having a lot of feed. They're different from humans, so you don't have to worry about that. Long as we gradually build up and uh, to their uh, uh, correct feeding rate, then everything is going to be fine. Now, another way to do it is to add fish uh, 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 a few of them at a time. You can add uh, another 1.5 pounds of fish, and then you can feed that accordingly. You can feed at the right rate, then maybe a few days later add another 1.5 pound fish and you can you know keep going and gradually adding and increasing the feed at the same time that is another way to do it that's another way to do it and this may be more appropriate for people who are uh, not as experienced because a lot of people when they see all of the fish in there you end up adding all the fish at one time they get the seven year itch to go ahead and stick their hand in a big nice bucket and grab all the feed and toss it in there so this prevents that from happening if you're just adding enough fish in there and then you're adding the feed uh, at the correct proportion and then that and then you just you know keep gradually increasing the feed and the fish so that's another way that you can look at it and it may be more appropriate for your system because you have him you're not patient so you may be you, you may get the seven year itch and you might want to do the, uh, the the large feed quantities so we can prevent that by doing this now as far as the plants as far as the plants the plants are pretty much the same exact thing you're going to increase the plants as you increase uh, the amount of feed that you put in there um, you'll do that proportionally and this is assuming that you have a balanced system where the maximum amount of feed that you're going to put in is going to support the actual plant production that you have so by the time you reach the uh the maximum feed input then at that point you should be able to um have your system fully stocked with the plants so hopefully that helps you out somewhat and hopefully, my friend, you can one day come down from aquaponics paradise, the heavens, as an aquaponics god. Woo!